Hello everyone, so this video is going to be about Marxist philosophy and why Marxists think and believe what they believe and why their worldview is so twisted compared to uh, normal civic society. So first of all, what you have to understand about human beings is they are very keen on knowing what's in their best interests almost subconsciously or oftentimes subconsciously and a Marxist a socialist what is in their best interest their best interest is in maximizing the power of the state maximizing the state apparatus because they are part of the state apparatus so giving politicians more money collecting more taxes um, printing more money all of these things that are uh, antithetical to a civil and prosperous society is um, almost worshipped by the Marxist because this is their lifeblood. This is where their money comes from. They're never going to tell you, oh yes, uh, I'm, an, I'm a non-essential and I just sit around and collect paychecks from the state. They're never going to tell you this because it's shameful. But they are going to manipulate you into submitting to the state, into giving state total control of society. So, um, this one actually was very, this meme uh, was reposted by some Marxists. This is the libertarian. You know, I get taxed at 40% and see no benefits. It's over 40%. See no benefits from it besides my roads. I think this is an injustice. And then this is the Marxist. Fuck you, fascists. We're going to kill you. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, and I can't wait to shoot you in the fucking head. Your life has less value than my bullet. And Marxists actually reposted this meme on Reddit and uh, celebrated the captions that I added. And uh, this is exactly how the Marxists feel. And this is the foundation of their worldview. Because you are their slave. You are beneath them. You are extorted by them. They are the plantation owner and you are the slave. You are their slave. And it is very deep in human psychology on a subconscious level. Something that's very deep is that human beings hate their servants. Human beings hate the people that serve them. They naturally hate the people that serve them. Because they're very keen to the social hierarchy. They're very keen to um, where they stand in the social hierarchy. And people will dedicate their lives, dedicate their existence to maximizing uh, where they stand in the pecking order. Where they stand in the, the social status and the social hierarchy. And Marxism gives them more social status, gives them more power, gives them more domination over you, over their slaves. So, of course, it actually naturally makes a lot of sense that these people with this, uh, this twisted incentive structure and this privilege, it makes sense that they would dedicate their lives to the violent fascist Marxist system. Because this is, it's their lifeblood. It's where they get their money from. It's where they get their status from. It's where they get their power from. So human beings naturally maximize their power. And in a civil society, in a free market, people maximize their power by offering quality services who are, that are in demand by the public. So in a capitalist system, in a free market system, you get your power through service. You get your power through labor. You get your power through innovation and production. In a Marxist society, in a Marxist worldview, you get your power by threatening to kill your neighbors. You get your power by uh, calling your neighbors domestic terrorists, calling your neighbors fascists, and uh, dominating, dominating your neighbors through violence. And so then we have to ask ourselves, is it no surprise that these fascist Marxists are drawn towards this domination, are drawn towards this violence? This is, this is where they get their money. This is how they make their money. So of course they are. 
And I can't stress enough the the hatred of servants, the hatred of slaves. There's nothing more disgusting to a human being than his servants, than his butler, than his maids, than his slaves. And to a Marxist, the workers are nothing but their slaves. The workers are uh, vile, repulsive things to the Marxist, to the statist, to the government worker. There's nothing more revolting than a taxpayer to the government. The government, the government hates nothing more in this world than the taxpayers. Because of this power dynamic, because of this master-slave dynamic. And it's actually, it's extremely tragic, but it's extremely uh, natural, I hate to say. It's both of those things at the same time. Here's another one. This is a Marxist uh, mantra, to abolish wage labor. If communists were actual workers and not merely consumers then they'd understand that workers actually value their wages and their earnings. That's why they're at work. <laughs> and this is completely, this completely goes over the head of Marxists because A, Marxists are not workers, period. And B, Marxists have a completely different incentive structure and a completely different worldview from actual workers so this is something that marxists can't understand because they're they're acting out of their subconscious all of this hate all of this confusion is derived from their subconscious and their subconscious is derived from their worldview and their worldview is derived from their incentive structures do you, do you follow this logic so their incentive is to maximize state power because they get their money from the state. They get all of their uh, wealth from the state. So their, their incentive is to maximize state power. And then their worldview is fascism because all of their incentives revolve around maximizing state power. And then due to this fascism, this is why they want to commit violence on their neighbors and this is why they want to make everyone submit to their violence and submit to their political will. So, uh, here's the, this, the bottom of this meme. There exists a push and pull between workers desiring high wages and consumers who desire to pay workers nothing. You can clearly tell which side the communist is on. So the communist is obviously a consumer not a worker because the communist mantra is to pay workers nothing and workers will work for free for the good of the community and you tell any worker in the world this and they look at you and say what the what the hell are you talking about <laughs> you've lost your mind <laughs> and that's why there are no workers who are marxists literally none <laughs> and they and they they can't even uh they can't understand this they uh, because they're operating fundamentally on a subconscious level their worldview their incentive structure all of these things are subconscious and they lash out at in with such hate and such violence because the foundation of their ideology and of their worldview is political violence it's ultimately what it is Call them red fascists because that's what they are. Here's a interesting contrast. So at the top here is civil society and service to society. And at the bottom is political violence, red fascism. So tells you to buy Bitcoin at $100 a coin because this person sees society as a team and he wants Bitcoin to replace the, uh, the fiat corrupt system. So that's why uh, ANCAPs told everyone to buy Bitcoin. Promises not to rob or kill you because we believe in civil society. We believe in a cooperative civil society. And of course, people naturally hate their servants. They naturally hate uh, cooperative civil society. Marxists do. And then 
uh, the red fascist calls you a racist and fascist because they're projecting and because they're inherently hateful and violent. Their worldview is inherently hateful and violent. Promises to rob and kill you because once again, their worldview is hateful and violent. Their incentive structure is inherently uncivil. And they're wildly popular. Uh, I think I think this last note is just humor about the irony of the situation. The red fascists are only popular amongst other red fascists. Most people react with fear and disgust and uh, avoidance and ostracism. Because what else can you do? Like, debate them? That doesn't go anywhere. These people are horrifying. They're monsters. <laughs> you can debate them, but it doesn't go anywhere. Because they're inherently not part of society. They're, uh, they're a, a, a parasite on society. They are inherently destructive to civil society. And uh, when you have a lifetime of this privilege, of this corruption, of this worship of fascist state power, it really destroys people's soul. It really deeply destroys people's soul. And um, a debate in good faith is not going to repair someone's soul. <laughs> Maybe a hundred debates in good faith, but one debate in good faith, no, it's not happening. So here's another one. By faced when Marxists raise the price of products and rent by 200% after gaining a monopoly of both business and land. Because <laughs> that's what Marxism is and socialism. A monopoly of everything. Everything is state-owned. So what's the first thing people are going to do? What's the first thing any institution is going to do after achieving a monopoly? Through extreme violence and without the consent of society, without the consent of the, all of those previous owners and of the people who produced those businesses and produced that real estate and produced those products. Obviously, the first thing that monopoly is going to do is raise the price of everything and consume more wealth and consume more power. That's their goal from day one. They're not shy about it. <laughs> This is not this is not some big secret, okay? The first thing they're going to do is crank up the price of everything and you're going to suffer. And you know who's going to benefit? You know exactly who's going to benefit. These people are going to benefit. That's why they're out in the street. That's why they're willing to kill you. Because their incentive, the in their worldview is a zero sum game that is f and foundationally violent. It is foundationally antisocial. And so any society that these people are a part of, that this ideology is a part of, will destroy itself through violence. That's what it is. That's what they do. <laughs> okay? These people are not about to start a farm. They're not about to... This whole mutual aid stuff is a joke. It's a fairy tale. Okay, it's called a PR campaign. It's not real. <laughs> the whole point of Marxism is to commit violence against your neighbors and then to extort as much money as possible through that violence. Right here, it says it's right here. Willing to risk their lives in a violent revolution in order to give absolute control over all of society to politicians. A profession known for its divine wisdom, trustworthiness, lack of greed, uh, lack of compassion. Oh, actually, sorry, not lack of compassion. Lack of greed, compassion, creativity, and foresight. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of sarcasm in the second half of this meme. So be aware of that. And just be aware of the where the hatred of Marxists comes from and where their ideology and worldview comes from. It's all based on social status, it's all based on privilege, and it's all based on incentive structures, their incentive structure. 
I mean, <clears throat> these are tremendously fucked up human beings. And uh, truth be told, especially the younger ones, they can't help it. This is a this is a strictly subconscious um, reaction. Like all of the things that I put into the social contract dissolve power, and they help the working class. And the reason I believe in those things is because I don't have power and I am the working class. So I might seem like this noble guy to some of you and I might seem like a demon to others because of your incentive structure, because of how you are subconsciously reacting to your incentive structure. This, it's not even really necessarily your morals. It's, it's, a, it's a very subconscious thing that human beings naturally do. So like Joe Biden, he's the president, right? The Democratic Party, things like that. Their incentive structure is to raise taxes, is to print money. Now, is raising taxes a good thing? No, for most people. No, it's not. Is printing money a good thing? No, for most people. No, it's not. But for this specific demographic, for this specific group, it is a good thing. They are incentivized to do so. So they will subconsciously create a worldview and subconsciously create um, a ethical system, or in their mind, an ethical system. Other people will disagree with their ethical system. But they will create this ethical system which revolves around hurting people because they benefit from hurting people. Their institution benefits from hurting people. And they'll make up all of these lies. They'll make up all this nonsense. They'll, they'll uh, call workers domestic terrorists. They'll hate on uh, the truckers. Like All of this hatred for truckers, all this hatred for libertarians, all this hatred for the working class, all this hatred for the gold standard, it's all based on their incentive structure. It's all based on this, uh, this zero-sum game this, uh, based on state power, which is fundamentally revolves around violence towards your neighbors and violence against your own citizens. Like, that's, that's what the state is all about, is committing violence against its own subjects, its own citizens. And we get back to this whole slave mentality, this whole slave system. Human beings hate their slaves. They absolutely hate their slaves. And I, I think a lot of that is, uh, is a coping mechanism. Because how evil can you possibly be in your heart, in your soul, to hate the people that serve you, right? It, it's like, wait a second, like, you're, you're serving me. You're laboring for me. How could I possibly hate you? And, and yet people do because it makes them feel powerful. Do you see? So, so this is a really a fundamental part of Marxism is hating the working class because the working class are slaves and the state enslaves the working class. So human, so these, these Marxists, these privileged state actors, uh, naturally, instinctively hate the working class and abuse the working class. The whole thing is sadistic. The whole thing is satanic. Uh, but, but the whole point of this video is to help you understand. To help you understand why uh, Marxists and Marxism is so damn toxic. And why workers hate them so damn much. <laughs> and why they hate workers. The, the workers hate them and they hate the workers. There's, <laughs> there's no, like, no overlap whatsoever. Uh, <laughs> so, like, I mean, the working class like the, love the bourgeoisie more than they like Marxists, to, to be quite honest with you. Because the bourgeoisie, like, they give you computers, they give you cars, they give you, how, well, houses not so much, because housing sucks. But, like, all of these sophisticated products and technologies, the bourgeoisie has contributed to that system. At least certain, certain parts of it.
And then what do the Marxists give the workers in exchange for all of their taxation? I said it once, I'll say it again. Workers get roads and social security. They don't get anything else. <laughs> that's all they get. And they better fucking like it. Because <laughs> that's all they're ever going to get. The state will never give them more than that. And for all of these taxes, for all of this inflation, that's all you get, really? And then, when you're getting your social security, like, 25% of your social security goes to property tax, and then you have to pay income tax on your social security. <laughs> like, what a scam! Have 50% of your social security goes directly into taxation. So, like, what it, it, it's what, $1,200 a month right now, or some, some BS like that? 1500 so you're getting $750 a month for the last 10 years of your life so what is that $7,000 a year times 10 years that's 75 grand that's all you get out of the government for your entire life a lifetime of taxation 75 grand before you die like what a what a scam and uh anyway I don't want to I don't want to keep you too long on this video i've already said most of what i needed to say that whole master slave dynamic is so important to understand and i was so confused about why this is the case like why is humanity like this and it, it kind of like really had a had a profound effect on me um until i kind of like understood it and came to terms with it because it really is sick and it really is deep in uh ingrained in like the human condition it is very very deep to hate your slaves to hate your servants to hate anyone who's below you on this this social status class system that every society creates and of course, who is the lowest class? The people who serve, the people who labor, which is bullshit. And in my system, that won't be the case. The, the, the lowest class in my system is the people who don't work, is the people who don't contribute. The people who will sit around in their pod and take their meager UBI, those are going to be the lowest classes in my society, in arcology. They'll have enough for food, They'll have enough for maybe a crappy apartment too, but uh, they're not going to get any more than that. And that's how it should be. The people who are serving, the people who are laboring, the people who get up every day and uh, allow our society to function, the essentials, they are going to be the new middle class. Period. That's the way things were on the gold standard and that's the way things will be in the future moving forward so and be the reason that's possible is because we're dissolving this little scumbag system right here the socialist scumbag this marxist scumbag we are dissolving this system that he worships the system that he spent his lifetime advocating for and being a part of and strengthening and uh yeah so the workers will be the middle class of the future the restaurant workers the uh the people the janitors janitors will be middle class food service will be middle class waiters and waitresses and bartenders will be middle class factory workers will be middle class and all of these non-essential pricks are going to be well, well they better be saving money right now <laughs> they better be saving money because otherwise they will be the new lower classes anyway this has went on long enough and it's a, a very angry video but it's a lot of things that really need to be said to uh to further everyone's understanding on why society is the way it is and why human beings are the way they are Anyway, it's all about incentives and the subconscious and uh, how people treat everyone who's below them in the social hierarchy. Anyway, that's it. Thank you and have a nice day.